Okay, so as promised, guys, I am going to be building a two-stage rocket. So this rocket is a um, extreme wild man, and it normally doesn't come in two stages, but I asked Tim Lear, the owner of Wildman Rocketry, to uh, make this kit for me in uh, two stages. So as promised, I'm going to be doing several videos that show how to construct the rocket and uh, you can apply these techniques to pretty much any of the high power rocketry builds, especially with fiberglass kits. Now, one thing that's unique with fiberglass kits is that um, the fiberglass tubing has a mold release on it from the factory when it's molded. So um, first step, when before we do anything with these rocket kits, we have to take all of our fiberglass apart and wash them to remove any of that residue from the mold release because if we don't we won't be able to get a good bond with our epoxy um, and then we could have structural failures with the rocket in flight so um, I'm gonna use my bathtub because it's a large enough uh, vessel for a tube that's 52 inches long guys you're gonna want to wear gloves when you do this anytime you're handling fiberglass tubes or sanding them, washing them, doing pretty much anything with them, you're gonna wanna wear gloves because the fiber glass fibers will get into your skin and itch and hurt and it's really obnoxious. So uh, get some gloves, put them on, wear them. Um, and this is a pretty simple process. Put the tubes in the water and uh, wash them, let them dry. And uh, you, I just use regular dish soap for this. So I've got my Dawn dish soap here and a sponge floating around in there. And uh, we're gonna throw all this stuff in the water. And I go ahead and I um, I wash my centering rings and my uh, fins as well. So I've got six fins here and a whole mess of centering rings and things too. And we're gonna put everything in the tub and we're just gonna wash everything and set it on these towels here to dry. Okay, so let's get started. We've got a ton of soap in here. So go ahead and be generous with your soap. Just make sure that when you're done washing off the mold release, you rinse everything really good. So go ahead and throw your, your center rings in there and all of your fins as well. And so um, we'll get everything in the tub. We'll get it all a nice scrub with the, uh, with the sponge here. Make sure we get all of that mold release off. It's important when you wash these tubes, not to forget to try your best to scrub the inside of the tube, especially where the fin slots are because that is where pretty much all of our epoxy bonding is going to be. So the upper section of the tubes where the parachutes will sit are not as critical as where the fins are bonded and the motor tube are bonded. So this area you really need to make sure you scrub the inside and the outside of the tube really really well so that you get a nice bond there. And then once we're done with this and we have it all dry, the next step of our prep is gonna be sanding all of this stuff. We're gonna sand the outside of the tube um, where the fins are, we're gonna sand the inside of the tube, we're gonna sand the entire motor mount tubes, and we're gonna sand the fins and the center rings. Okay, so now that we have everything washed, um, the next step is going to be sanding. So before we start marking our lines and reference points on the various components, we need to sand everything. Um, so I like to start with the motor tubes. We're gonna sand these two motor tubes. I've got one for the booster, the shorter one here for the booster, and the longer one for the sustainer. We're also gonna sand all six uh, centering rings. Um, we're gonna sand the outside of them. We're also gonna sand both edges just slightly. And we're also going to sand the um, fin root of each of the six fins on both sides. And um, along with that, we're also going to sand the inside and the outside, the entire inside side and outside of each one of these, th these uh, three tube couplers. And finally, our body tube. So we don't need to sand the entire body tube. We're just going to sand our fin slots, each one of our fin slots on the outside and then on the inside we're gonna sand the entire 
um, fin root area uh, along that inside because that's where our motor tube is going to sit. So we want the, to sand that entire area so that we get a nice good bond with, uh, with our motor tube centering rings when we insert that. So we're going to sand that on it for both of our body tubes. And so uh, let's get started. So for sanding, um, here I've got some 80 grit sandpaper. I like to use 80 grit for sanding, uh, for the initial sanding. And then once we're done sanding, I like to wipe everything down with uh, isopropyl alcohol. You can use acetone or denatured alcohol too. That works um, just... Uh, just as well but you do want to get that uh that fiberglass dust off so um like usual guys wear gloves when you're doing this um because fiberglass fibers will get into your skin i assure you i have made this mistake many times um because I, i'm not a fast learner but um it's no fun okay so after some light sanding with the, the 80 grit sandpaper you can see you have some scratches in the uh, the tube. This is about what you want. You want this kind of, uh, it almost looks like a cloudy consistency here with these, uh, with these uh, fiberglass tubes. And then what we're gonna do is just take a towel with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol here and uh, we're just gonna wipe this down. And that will remove a lot of that um, fiberglass dust from the surface. Uh, let's see if I can do this without dropping the camera. And then you should have a nice tube, clean tube like that. And that will give us a nice good bond for our centering rings and for our, our, um, and for our uh, epoxy. Okay guys, so we're gonna talk about some prep items before we get started to actually gluing stuff. So to start off, I'm gonna show you this thing. This is a uh, motor tube for this is the motor tube for the booster section of this rocket. Um, as you can see, I've already epoxied the centering rings on and the um, Kevlar bridle that goes in here. Um, I have not epoxied the lower centering ring in place because I'm gonna be using a thrust plate that I'm gonna show you guys later. But uh, in the meantime, and we're also gonna need to do our internal fillets for the fins. So um, I built this one already. I go heavy on my epoxy, so excuse the mess. Um, it really doesn't matter because all of this is inside of the rocket. So, I mean, you know, it's one of those things that, uh, frankly, do what you want. I mean, I would rather have more than not enough. Uh, it's my opinion, but, uh, you know, it really is a personal preference thing. As long as it's not adding so much weight that it's throwing the balance off on the rocket and the stability, then you're fine. So, um... I use rocket epoxy for this. Um, I kind of waffle between a lot of different epoxies for my rockets. Um, I'm not gonna get into the pros and cons and the big like epoxy debate. I, you know, frankly, I don't care. Um, I use what I feel like is most convenient. And uh, as long as it's a good quality epoxy, I think that's as far as it needs to go. Um, that being said, um, before we do this, you need to make some index marking with a Sharpie on these tubes so that you kind of know where everything goes before you start gluing things. So um, I wanna talk about that in this video and, um, and show you how I do that and how I make those marks and where I make those marks just to, so that I have a good understanding of where everything goes before I start actually epoxying things in place. This helps me keep track of what I'm doing and it makes um, working on the project a lot simpler and easier because then I can look at the individual parts and I know where they go. So that applies to a lot of things. That applies to the center rings themselves, the motor tube marking where these straps go along the motor tube here, and also 
on the fins themselves and the couplers. And we're, the reason why we're gonna mark the couplers is because normally we have to drill holes in our couplers for various different things. In our case, the couplers serve as an avionics bay. So by making marks on them now, um, and we can actually use the body tube to help us do that, by making marks on them now, it makes drilling holes and spacing those holes uh, consistently a heck of a lot easier if we do that now rather than waiting to the last minute to do it. Now, that being said, um, when we go to put our um, fins in the, in the rocket, um, I like to take each one of my fins and number them and then number each slot for the rocket. And that, that serves a purpose. Now, I'm gonna step outside and I'm gonna take all this stuff and show you how, that, how uh, we do that and explain a little bit more of why. So we're gonna start with our couplers. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna place each one of the couplers inside the back of the body tube where the fin slots are. And what that's gonna allow us to do is make three lines along the back side here. And that is gonna serve as index points for screws and things like that going down the line. Typically I use PIM nuts or some people use uh, plastic rivets to hold their, um, their avionics bay to their payload bay. Um, I, when I, I like to use the same number as, uh, as the number of fins on the rocket, just uh, out of convenience. So having these, uh, these, these lines on the back of the coupler makes doing that a heck of a lot easier. So we do that now while we have the opportunity. So just go ahead and I'm gonna slide my coupler into the back of the booster here, right? And then just take your, uh, your Sharpie, make a nice line right along there. And so do that for each one of your fin slots and each one of your couplers. Now I'm not gonna show you all three couplers. It's gonna be the exact same process for each one. So just go ahead and make these marks for each one of your couplers and then each one of, each one of your, uh, for each one of your sections. Now, And then you can go ahead and pull that coupler out. And so now you can see we have three nice lines for our index points. So you're gonna do that for each one of the different couplers we have here. Now for the uh, centering rings, let's talk about the centering rings. So when you put your centering rings in your rocket, you'll notice that basically what you have is let me turn this around. Your rocket has three fin slots. You need to make sure that your straps for your shock cord don't interfere with your with your your uh, fin slots. So in order to do that, I ch try and choose a point that is right in the middle of each one of the three, in between two of the fin slots. And then I mark a small, notch right there right and so we're going to do two of those and what that does is tell me where i need to um where i need to file out a slot for my uh for my straps and then if you want you can draw a line that just shows you exactly where your three fins sit along your centering ring and that makes filing out the fin slots really easy, uh, or the, not the fin slots, the uh, strap slots really easy. And then from there, now we're gonna talk a little bit about our fins themselves. So you'll notice on my body tube, each one of my fin slots has a number marked on it. One, two, and three. And then obviously for my sustainer, I have four, five, and six. So, why? 
That's because when fiberglass tubes are slotted, typically there's a little bit of difference in when these, um, when these slots are cut. So sometimes these fins will not fit smoothly in these slots and you'll have to file them or sand them a little bit to make sure that they fit. The difference is that sometimes there's a little bit of variation between fins. So what that means is that if I try and take fin number one and put it in fin number two slot, it may not fit very well. So to make sure that I have a nice good fit when I'm sanding, I sand the slot, um, I get a fin, I choose a fin, I make sure that that fin fits. And when I sand it to the point where that fin fits uh, well, then now that fin is, uh, is assigned to that slot. And that way I know when I go to start gluing things in place that every fin that I go to put in is going to go into its slot nicely as opposed to having uh, to fight with it. I made this mistake once before and it ended up being a pain in the butt because I had epoxy mixed up and then I'd go and try and put the fin in and I thought I had it all filed out so it would go in smoothly and then it fought, fought me. So that's why I started doing this. Assign a fin to a slot, keep it that way and it makes your life easier. So um, I've already taken the liberty of going ahead and fitting my fins to each slot. I, I filed out the slot just a little bit. I didn't have to do much with these. Um, and you see, they drop in nicely. And uh, so I did that with all, all six of my fins and they are all numbered one, two, one through six for their respective uh, fins. And then that way it keeps it straight for me and uh, we can move forward a lot quicker. So, um, that's it for prep and now we're going to start in our next video we're going to start talking about uh actually uh gluing things in place and i'm going to show you how i glue uh how i uh epoxy the motor mount together and then once we get the motor mount done uh both motor mounts done we'll start tacking fins on in place and doing internal fillets and then uh the next video after that will be um will be avionics bays and we'll build the two avionics bays and I'll show you how we set up the dual, the, uh, dual deployment for the booster and the staging system for the booster and sustainer. And then we'll do the, the obviously the dual deployment on the sustainer. So um, yeah, uh, check out my next video. Hopefully I'll have it up soon and uh, we'll, go through the, uh, we'll go through the next process. Thanks for watching and uh, yeah, have a good day guys.